Hello pilots, Soldier Hobbs 11 here, and this is my guide on the Assault Mech. Now, if you're confused as to why I didn't do a CRT mech guide, it's because this and, well, the CRT and the Assault are very, very similar. You can pause here for the stats. In concept, they're very similar, but statistically there's some differences. The Assault has a bit more armor, it's a bit faster, but it has a longer overheat recovery time, and it's got smaller fuel tank. That's the main differences between it and the CRT, but essentially they play very, very similar, so yeah. Let's get started in so I can show you right how to use it. Okay, so this mech is basically the standard play style of Hawk, and if you have trouble piloting this mech, you're gonna have trouble with Hawk in general, so I highly suggest you learn this mech well as you can. Because out of all the mechs, it's the simplest to pilot. It has the most simplest weapons in the game, the, the SMC or the submachine cannon, and the tow rocket, too. The two are very simple weapons, simplest in the game, and the ability is also very simple as well. It's called Weapons Coolant, and I'll go over the abilities and the weapons more a little bit later, but, you know, pretty much what you need to do in order to be able to do this is just know how to play the game in general, be good with the controls, and be familiar with all that. And if you have not done the VR training, go do the VR training. I cannot stress it enough. People, seriously, they don't know the controls for the game. I've met them in the game. They don't know what the repair button is. Seriously, people, do the VR training. But yeah, anyways, let's get back to the mech. Now, everything I say in here regarding the assault is also directly applies to the CRT, because, like I said, they're eventually the same. They're essentially the same mech, and uh, what what I say about one will automatically apply to the other. Remember, the key differences here are being that the CRT has a little less armor, it doesn't move as fast, but it has a lot it, bigger fuel tank, and like I said in my beginner's video, if you haven't checked that out, watch it. But in my beginner's video, I said you don't want to run out of fuel, and the CRT is less likely to run out of fuel, and also the overheat recovery time of the CRT is 4 seconds versus 5.75 seconds on the Assault. So, it's a lot less punishing if you overheat. And those are usually fairly new concepts inside the game of Hawken itself, so... It, the, the new players are given a bit of a crutch on those aspects without making the mech too overpowered. And so the assault is like once you learn the game, assault is the one you want to you're gonna want to get. It's I, if anything, this is the first mech you're gonna want to purchase. Now, if there ever was to say there's the best mech in the game, mm, that really depends on what the definition of best is. There really isn't supposed to be a best mech in the game. I mean, the game, the mechs don't make the pilot. The pilots make the mech. And in this one, I'd say that more some mechs have very clear strengths, but then they also have very defined weaknesses, but some are a bit more balanced, they're more the middle ground, which is like the Assault, it's definitely the middle ground. The Assault is the best mech in the game as far as balance is concerned. It's the easiest to use, it's the most forgiving, and like I said, it's just the easiest to use. New players will find it, and even experienced players, whenever they're having a rough time in any other mech, they'll immediately just fall back to their Assault mech. It's the it's the old faithful of all players in Hawken, which, you know, I can't stress enough. Learn the assault mech. This is the first and this is the first mech you should get because it is uh, I, again, it's not the best, but I would say it is the most balanced and it is the most reliable mech in the game. Now, as far as using this mech and more specific strategies, this mech can do just about everything. I mean, it is the middleman mech. What it can be used for, it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about any mech, any lights and heavies, although with heavies you're going to want to be a little bit more careful about what you do. But it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about any mech in the game, no problem. It is the assault mech, after all. You know, it's generally found, like, on the front line, pushing forward, you know, leading a charge. It's a very good spearhead in most cases, and, you know, it's a good backbone of a team as well, and a good assault mech. In fact, even a team of six assault mechs, that's probably the most solid team in the game. It, it, it's ridiculous how, 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 how uh, well that just six assault mechs alone will work, and, yeah. Okay, so now let's just cover the weapons really quick. The primary weapon that comes standard with the mech is called the Submachine Cannon, or SMC is for short. And it's base. It's it is probably I'd say is the standard weapon in the game. It's very simple to use. It's you know it's like a submachine cannon. If you ever played any other games like Call of Duty, uh, you ever seen a submachine gun? It's essentially how it works. Very rapid rate of fire. Uh, decent amount of damage. Uh, decent range on it too. It's it's all right. It's not that great at long range, obviously, because you know submachine cannon. But uh, at medium range, it'll still be pretty effective. But in close range, it is where it really shines. It'll just it'll tear people up really, really well. But the main thing about this gun is its reliability. It's just, it's good for any situation. 
That's the main thing about the submachine cannon. And it doesn't heat up very fast either, which is nice. You can hold the fire button down for quite a long time and you won't and that you just don't you 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 won't be in very much trouble of overheating. And of course, the secondary weapon on this mech is the trusty tow rocket. Yes, the very trusty tow rocket. This is where you want to do a lot of damage really quick. That's where you fire the tow rocket. It's got a reload time of about a eh, little, like, around two seconds, so maybe a little bit over. But it does quite a bit of damage, and it has, does have quite a bit of area of effect. Now, of course, to do the maximum amount of damage, you want to get a direct hit. And but if you don't get a direct hit, you know, you can always aim for splash damage at their feet. Or, and there's a feature that most people, or most new guys, they forget about, is the air blast, which you can get just by hit, either hitting middle mouse, or you can actually do it just by hitting the right mouse at the end. It'll air versus the air, and it'll at least deal splash damage if you don't, if you miss on your direct hit, so, you know. So your tow rocket doesn't got, does not get wasted at that point. So, and then, yeah, you can see a cycle of clips here, and then this is uh, the new primary weapon. Okay, this gun that you see here is called Point G Vulcan, or the Mech Shredder, as some of us like to call it. As you can tell just by the way it sounds and the way it looks, it's just basically, it's just a Gatling gun strapped to your mech. And it's very, very good at close range. It'll, like I said, it's called the me it's called the Mech Shredder for a reason. But then you can see here at a medium to long range, completely useless. It, it was hardly doing any damage to that light mech at all, but then I got in close and I was able to really, really mess it up. And yeah, and then of course the, the traits of this weapon are you get a lot of damage going out, but it's very limited range. And it's also got very high heat. It'll heat up a lot faster than the SMC will. And of course, and of course it, but yeah, it does do more damage than the SMC when you're up close in person or, you know, hugging somebody with the Vulcan, which is essentially what you want to do, because you see it here at mid-range, it's not doing that much damage. And yeah, you want to get in close like you see here with the Sniper. Even then, I, I'd still want to be a little bit closer than that. But yeah, the Vulcan does output a huge amount of damage, but you can see me uh, overheating really, really quickly. And there's also a spin-up time, which means you got to wait about half of a second before it actually starts shooting. And if your finger comes off, the mouse for even a split second, you gotta re-spool the gun all over again. So yeah, beware of that spin-up. It can really mess with you. It can really mess you up at times. So to uh, account for this spin-up, what most Vulcan pilots will do is that, like, you know, just, just before you're gonna engage somebody, or, you know, just before you're gonna round up a corner, you hold the gun so you can spin it up, and then as soon as you end up rounding that corner, you already start shooting. That's just one little tip that you do. And then once you start shooting, don't stop, because then you get to respin up the gun, and in the middle of a fight, respinning up the gun can kill you. But yeah, uh, just be very careful, because like I said, the heat that this thing generates is extreme, and you gotta be careful. Although, don't think you can try to Rambo with this gun, because <laughs> like, even in, uh, still, odds, like, if you're like 1 versus 5, it's just, no, it's not gonna work. Even with a gun that does output this amount of damage, it's just not gonna work. And, you know, sometimes you, you die. I mean, even I die at times. But yeah, this gun does... Remember, the thing about this thing with the heat is that you're going to use your ability a lot with this gun. And so, and the ability, is, again, is called Weapons Coolant, and you can tell by the name. I mean, what it does is that it, it takes a certain amount of heat that's within the heat meter, and it'll just vent it out. And so, you know, essentially you can fire your guns for twice as long as any other mech by using your weapon school. I didn't use it there mainly because I didn't want to have to, you know, waste the ability, but... But yeah, that's what weapon school does. It's a very simple ability, and, you know, it really helps out. Especially if it's, like, ish, almost overheating, but you really, really just want to be able to, like, be able to keep fighting. You can just use the ability, and then you can just keep on rolling. Yeah. Weapon school is easily the, well... It's easily the most simple ability in the game, but it's easily one of the most useful in the game. There's never a bad time to use the ability at all. But, you know, I, me personally, I tend to use it a little bit more sparingly in situations where, you know, I think maybe I could just hide behind cover for a little bit and then just, you know, reach up and then let my heat go down by itself. But, you know, if I really need to, then I'll, you know, I'll go weapon school and if I know I need, I need to use it in order to, like, fend off a couple extra enemies with my team or, uh, you know, just... Just if I really, really want that kill, I'll use weapons coolant on it just so I don't overheat. Because you know, overheating this mech, you're down for 5.75 seconds. You know, pretty much like you're down for six seconds, and in the middle of an intense fight, six seconds is a long, long time. But yeah, 
use, but remember, use this ability before you overheat, not after. Because once you overheat, it doesn't it doesn't reduce that time by much. You're not going to instantly bring your weapons back up. It's still going to take at least another two seconds if you decide to use this ability once you overheat. So remember, use it before you overheat to maximize its effect. And remember the uh. And remember, the cooldown for this thing isn't too long. It's like only a little over 30 seconds. So, like, you know, now I said, as I said before, this mech is good for being on the front line, and the Vulcan is pretty good for being on the front line, especially like on maps that are a little bit more close range. Things like Wreckage, Uptown, and Origin. That's a good place for the Vulcan, but, you know, longer range maps, you're probably going to want to switch out to the SMC, or maybe even the Assault Rifle, which I'll showcase in a little bit. But yeah, the Vulcan is still a very viable weapon. Uh, it's not my preferred weapon. I mean, I still like it. But, you know, uh, it's still a good weapon to be able to choose. I'd still say SMC is the most solid, it's the most reliable one that you're going to want to count on. But, yeah. But I do like the Vulcan for when I like to flank and I get behind the enemy, I sneak up behind them. And then I can just, you know, like, I'll put a lot of damage really quickly from behind. They won't know what hit them. And then, you know, just take them out quick. And, like, in flanking maneuvers a lot. And for me, I, I, I like to flank a lot when I, play the, when I play Hawkins. So, you know, this gun definitely helps out with that. Okay, now, here, we're going to be showcasing the Assault Rifle. Now, the Assault Rifle, it does play a little bit differently than what the typical Assault does. And But for the CRT, this is the standard weapon, so pay attention now. Now, with this gun, it does it does more damage per, like, single shot than uh, the other two weapons do. But it fires a lot slower, so it doesn't... So it's going to have a lot less DPS up close. It has a very much a tighter spread than the other two guns, but again, it's probably up in up close quarters. It's probably going to lose against the SMC or the Vulcan because they can just output so much more damage more quickly than the AR can up close. But then, like at mid range, which is where the assault rifle will shine the best, it's able to cleanly output a lot of damage and be able to land all those shots too at that range. So, yeah, this weapon is definitely for a mid-range fighter and you know it's also good for the tow rockets too because this is where you got to learn to lead your toes a little bit and learn the timing of how to do the air burst it's all that so yeah so yeah practicing with the assault rifle and the crt is definitely a good thing and on the assault mech it is pretty good it helps the assault get uh you know a bit more range on it than it normally would have which is why it's the prestige weapon on the uh the, the assault mech it's unlocked at rank five and also the so, by the way, the Vulcan is unlocked at rank 3, and then the SMC is from standard, so, you know, when you're rank 1, you can still use this weapon. So, now, as far as the heat rate of the assault rifle, it's in between the SMC and the Vulcan. Not as much as the submachine cannon outputs, but it is, I mean, no, it's not as much as the Vulcan, I'm sorry. But it's, you know, it's still more than the SMC, so, you know, it's got like a medium kind of a heat output to it. But, you know, it still does a, quite a fair amount of damage, and sorry, I was teaching one of the uh, got new guys in the game kind of how to play and then you know I ended up dying because I was typing but oh well but yeah the assault rifle is still a very handy weapon it's very good it's uh, essentially how you can you can tickle people to death at it uh, at a range as you can see me doing right here it's how it's fun like you just tickle them to death with it it's got a lot more range than it, both the SMC and the Vulcan so if you like to play it with a bit more range between you and your enemy then this is definitely the weapon for you now, like like I said, it's it's standard on the CRT, so it's good. Uh, so you know, if you like the assault rifle more, you can you know stick with your CRT, or you can choose to level up your assault mech all the way to rank five, so you can get this as the prestige weapon, or you know unlock it early with meteor credits. Now, just to note, all the weapons in this game, they're not upgrades at all. They're more just alternate play styles. So the different weapons, like the SMC, I'd say is good like is a good all rounder type of a weapon. Uh, and then the assault rifle is a better like mid-range weapon, and then the Vulcan is definitely for like you know up close and personal in their faces. So, yeah, just keep in mind that all mechs in the game are built around this. The one weapon is not necessarily better than the other. It's just the different weapons. It's more like one's more likely to suit your playstyle than another. Uh, but yeah, but for this mech, I mean the, the weapons are fairly similar, so you might not notice it as much. But in a lot of the future mechs that I'll be showcasing that uh, it, it'll probably be a bit more apparent with some of those weapons, but yeah. Okay, now I want to briefly uh, brush, over, brush over the items and internals I use, and again, remember, like I said in my first video, if you saw it, items and internals, they shouldn't make your 
bad habits good. They should make good habits already better. So I'm going to briefly go over the ones I use. I actually tend to use the same setup on all my mechs. But uh, for right now, I got a, sh a Mark 1 shield, a Mark 1 hologram, and then a Mark 1 repair charge. You know, I use a shield a lot for dueling, a little bit of extra armor. I'll go over more details on how a shield can be amazing, and that'll be a separate video that I'll release. Hologram is kind of fun to use, mainly because I'm probably going to put a different item there instead of the hologram, but, you know, it's still fun to use. And then the repair charge is definitely something I really like to use because, you know, it'll keep me alive for a lot longer. And then, yeah, the internal setup I have is the air compressor, uh, a basic extractor, basic deflectors, and then uh, a basic reconstructor. Just because, you know, basic reconstructor so I can shorten my repair time a little bit because I'll, you know, I'll be out of combat for a while. Basic deflectors because, you know, dodging and boosting is something you should be doing. And then a basic extractor helps you uh, pick up health orbs a lot, 15% fa uh, faster, which helps a lot. And then the air compressor helps out a lot because it lets you dodge in the air and it just it, it's very useful in certain situations but again but again items and internals are actually determined more much more by play style than anything else but i'll cover them more in a future video so yeah this video is about to wrap up so again guys i hope you found this um, uh video helpful with learning the crt or the assault mech uh you know next time i'll probably be covering the berserker and the vanguard pretty soon coming out as well but yeah, that's all for now, and this is the Assault Mech, I hope you guys enjoyed, if you liked it, you know, just keep watch, keep out for my future videos, and, you know, if you like and subscribe if you will, but yeah, this is Soldier Hobbs, and I guess this is me signing off, and I will see you next time.